Hi, and welcome to COVID Convos with Maddie Carver. I'm Maddie Carver, and today I have with me someone whose LinkedIn profile states, indigenous women plus interior designer plus creative connector equals radical behavior. I am so thrilled and so excited to introduce Sequoia Hunter Sujay, senior interior designer with Floss Barber. Welcome, Sequoia. So nice to have you. Thanks so much for being here. I'm really excited to be there. Oh, well, you look great, and I am just so excited to see you, and you look so healthy. How are you holding up? How are you doing? I'm doing really well. You know, this transition of working from home has been interesting, so I actually am set up in my kitchen too, like that's where my, my desk is, so I'm staring at all of my kitchen cabinets. <laughs> well, I'm sure they're I'm sure they're beautiful knowing you. Um, so tell me a little bit about what's going on at Floss Barber. What kind of work are you doing there? Very cool, very cool. Um, tell me something, Sequoia, what would you consider to be your personal design aesthetic? <laughs> Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> I love that. I totally love that. <laughs> um, so, well, of course, I totally understand that. And to me, like more is more, not less is more. So I, I'm, I'm with you on that. Um, so last year, um, you initiated, developed, and moderated a Design Philadelphia program called um, Design Diversely Women of Color in Design. Um, tell me a little bit about that program, you know, what the impetus was for that and the conversation that came out of that evening. Right. Like it really is something that has to come out of the design philosophy, and most design philosophies are really rooted in um, the European aesthetic and the European um, history of architecture design, um, and it falls short now that we are in such a global society, multiracial, multicultural, multiethnic, um, where it's our job to have interiors that reflect that diversity and 
Well, so we, yeah. We had a, um, I had a really interesting panel of women of color, um, and we sort of broke down sort of the different facets of um, how we can start to engage um, this level, of, this sort of higher thinking of design philosophy in our offices. I, I love that. It's so, it's so incredibly important. And um, it's just, I, I personally feel that, you know, the inclusivity portion of our society, we just need to be working on that every day, right? I mean, that, that's something that's not just like we talk about it once and then we let it, you know, sit on the wayside. It has to happen every day and it's got to be a constant conversation. And remember that. Remember the time where those um, creations were were coming together, and what was going around on around them at that point. Um, exactly. Let me ask you, kind of, I guess, going forward, and and you know, thinking about the past, the present, and, and into the future. Um, what is your vision uh, for the future of this industry, um, especially in light of of what we're experiencing right now? How can designers begin to innovate for what will become kind of our new normal? Um, or what, what we have in store for maybe when we get back, or I don't think things will ever be the same, but um, when, when we start to, you know, get out of this a little bit. Yeah, right. I know because I, I do, I actually do feel like that's a good idea is that maybe we could have some sort of a, a go-to meeting or a Zoom meeting where we do discuss um, how will social spaces look? How will healthcare spaces look? I mean, it's not even just about, you know, buildings work, you know, um, working in a, in a building or going, you know, to an office. It's, it's how will we eat in restaurants. How will we, uh, you know, live in a in a uh, a senior living community? I mean, all facets of life will yeah, change. Well, elevators, yeah, well, elevators start to get bigger just so that there's more space. Um, 
Yes. If you, if you go out to the, um, you know, a supermarket or a pharmacy now, um, they have like tape on the ground sort of marking this distinction of like um, distance. And so it will really be interesting sort of how that weaves its way um, into this idea of social spaces since um, many sectors, especially sort of multifamily, um, there's all these communal spaces, communal kitchens, um, and having these big fancy club rooms and TV rooms. And um, I think it might take a, a while for people to want to be in close proximity to each other. Yeah, so it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how how this all pans out, and I would love to take this this conversation a lot further with you, Sequoia. But for right now, I need to ask my most pressing questions, and that is, what TV shows are you binging, and what song can you suggest for my quarantine playlist? <laughs> okay. uh, uh, first of all, quarantine playlist. Um, I have been listening to some classic Michael. Oh, so good. I, yeah. The man was a genius. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, of course, have a totally binge on Tiger King. Um, <laughs> and immediate. <laughs> I haven't watched it yet, Sequoia. I haven't watched okay. Tiger King yet. Yeah, you, you have to watch it. Okay. Um, Well, very good suggestions. Thank you so much, Sequoia. This has been a fabulous conversation, a fabulous COVID combo. I appreciate you coming and being with me for a little while virtually anyway. So thank you so much. Well, thanks for the invite, Maddie. Okay. Well, you take care. Stay well and stay healthy, okay? Thanks. You too. Thanks. Bye.